Hi, and welcome back to the public law right here on No Borders Radio at nobordersradio.co.uk. And we'll simulcasting as well on pianistore.com. I pray everybody's well tonight. Bo will be joining us in just a moment. Um, let's see here. We can start out with uh, this on RINF today. CIA backed general makes a bid for power in Libya. It's very interesting that they're exposing the actions of these CIA operations, these CIA productions. Uh, Western backed general Khalifa Hapsop. Tar is attempting a coup in Libya. On May 18th, he attacked the national parliament and rival mili- militias. Haftar was head of former dictator Moha- Muammar Gaddafi's army during the med- disastrous civil war in Chad in the 1980s. He then defe- defected to the U.S. Yeah, he was already CIA. Um, that's what his function was, of course. Do we have you, Bo? Hello. Welcome to the public law. Hey. You sound kind of tired tonight. Ah, well, yeah. Well, there's breaking news. Uh, today I noticed that uh, a lot of disinfo agents were attempting to maintain that this Georgia courthouse shooting happened to be like a citizen or something, when in reality it was a federal agent. Did you see that? Yeah. That's yeah, former TSA Interesting. agent. So you've got other federal agents out there saying it was some citizen. Be scared, be scared. We're all here to to protect you and you're killing each other. He was a TSA agent. It's, it's all a design. This guy has it out for law enforcement. This guy has it out for citizen. Um, and uh, well, there were all... several suspicious things about that story. The uh, one uh, mention of the. Uh, SWAT team that was there in like 30 seconds or something just happened to be in the area. Let's see. Powerball winner. Oh, what is this? This is the wrong thing. Sorry about that. I had to take care of the sovereign cat. Oh, I I did another story I started reading from. That's not what I want. I want the... uh... Powerball winner? I don't think I've loaded that one up yet. Well, anyways, yeah, from memory there that, uh... The officer being raised by his peers. He won a million dollars on the lottery. And, um, all of a sudden he's got an attorney charging his wife with uh, prostitution on the side. And, uh, it's very interesting what happens when... When somebody has more money than Caesar, or Caesar sees that somebody has more money than him, uh, all of a sudden here comes those these vulture attorneys maintaining charges. Now, let's see, I've got it here. I did want to touch on that other one too a little bit more. Um, Sovereign Cat didn't think that was a good idea at the time. Yeah, about the SWAT team, from memory, that SWAT team was right there in a heartbeat because they just happened to be in the area. Right, right, which was very, very interesting. They were less than 30 seconds away. So that means they were on site. You know, they were there. And um, all these these advertisements irritate me. Let's see here. Um, Let's uh, get back to the officer who won the lottery. We'll take care of that one, get that one out of the way. It's from WTAE.com. Officer who won lottery named in complaint against wife charged in promoting prostitution. Now, if you, any of our listeners go and read 27 CFR Code of Federal Regulations 72.11, prostitution, promoting prostitution are all commercial crimes. And under 27 CFR 72.11, they're undercutting the federal government. That means that the federal government says it's okay if they trick people out and be their pimps, but if you're making money on the same thing, then you're undercutting them, which is an offense against the laws of revenue, as written in 27 CFR 72.11. That's why they charge people for prostitution. They're saying that you're undercutting them. They're the mafia. So this is the Rankin police officer who bought a $1 million pound. Powerball ticket is named in a police complaint against his wife, Jennifer Brown, 
who faces charges including promoting prostitution through an internet site called 69entertainment.com. The allegations stem from an FBI and local investigation into internet prostitution from late 2012 through last June. It just happens to be, you know, this. And, and um, I, I'm tired of watching good law enforcement get raised by the federal government and these attorneys. And I, I, I pray every day, I pray to God that these law enforcement officers will hear us, number one. In the 1929 Geneva Convention, it says officers are prisoners of war. Agents and attorneys are not. And that's what happened back in 1933 at the bankruptcy. The attorneys came in with the 1933 Emergency Banking Act. You know, they took an oath under 12 U.S.C. subsection 73. This is, they're not hypothecated, you are. And these things, these things are disgusting, though. Yep, and it's got to stop. It does. And who's going to stop it? Oh, the citizen? No, the citizen is uh, bound down to uh, Caesar. Right. The uh, pro se, thinking he's battling in court. He is feeding into the law merchant's hands. Right, he's the in there on controversy. Sui juris. Yep. Sui. Sui? Yeah. Here's Sui, Sui, Sui. Uh, you know, ridiculous form that. Uh, I got back into it after like two years, you know, where I actually met Rockle from on the Southern Warriors website, and you know, just just ridiculous stuff. Uh, you, yeah, does anybody know how to write a promissory note so I can get out of debt? It's, the Bible says to come out of her, and I want to get out of the matrix. Right, I mean, and writing a promissory note says that you're a debtor. I promise to pay at a future date and time. Yada yada yada, and that's what this is all about. Congress already says you're the debtor. Congress says you're the one that's bankrupt as it comes in as a trustee over its own bankruptcy and it's using you to discharge it as a hypothecated negotiable instrument. And all you have to do is patronize it. That's that's all it takes. Just call it your daddy. And, and again, that's what Jesus said not to do. Call no man your father, not even Christ. Well, Lincoln President Lincoln came in with the 14th Amendment and said, okay, the, the person, a corporation, I'm going to give it life. And you've been patronizing, not even a, a being, you've been patronizing a fictional being as your father. And uh, it, it really has to stop. And that's what it said in, in Ephesians 6. It says your, your beef isn't with a citizen, it's, it's with principalities. It's with these ideologies and concepts that the law merchant sells you. And all it says is to what? Put on the whole armor of God. The truth. Breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness. You know, you take care of this yourself. You self-govern. You stop patronizing something else. And again, God's armor only fits God. You know, it's not going to fit Craig Kirk. He's out there pitching the law merchant. He's out there selling everybody fear mongering and, and telling them how to be tricked out in court process, how to fornicate more good early. According to First Corinthians six, you know, he's he's one of those that are following the Talmudic texts. It's pretty pretty disgusting, but uh, if anybody wants to read that story, it's at WTAE.com. Officer who won lottery named in complaint against wife charge with promoting prostitution. So he won it. He's a good cop, it looks like. Uh, it looks like they're taking a right back out of him by trumping up charges under 27 CFR 72.11 and taking advantage of this poor guy and, and uh, cannibalizing him without cause because he, he happened to win the lottery. So they found a nice little mark there. Yeah, you get too much stuff, that's the thing you got to worry about, because uh, Caesar don't like it. <clears throat> Absolutely not. And Jesus said, you know, don't give your stuff to the church, don't give your stuff to whoever. You just got to prioritize. What's most important? What are you protecting? Are you, are you protecting your television, that, that uh, big screen, or are you protecting your children, or are you protecting all your toys in your yard, or that fresh coat of paint outside your house? What are you protecting? What is your priority? What is your obligation? In actuality, that um, 
I'm still trying to get to that story. Um, there's a lot of things that were going on today. That Georgia courthouse shooting, the fear mongering that's going on really concerned me up front. And um, of course, then you go into detail here and start reading about this Georgia shooter. All day long, it's been like just he's a nutball sovereign citizen, he's a citizen, and all of these things. And sure enough, he's a federal agent. And uh, just like any other CIA presentation, um, let's see. It says, you know, of course, he, he began a full frontal assault, all of these things, lots of stuff for the, the sheeple mind for entertainment. Then it says, middle of the story, it says, deputies sent from the inside of the courthouse engaged in a roughly 90-second shootout with Mark's killing, and Piper said, quote, the SWAT team, which happened to be close by on their way to another function, also pulled up about 30 seconds into this gunfire fight, and they engaged Mr. Marks. Mr. Marks is dead with multiple gunshot wounds, the sheriff said. It's interesting that yeah, they thirty seconds. To be on the I scene. just happen to be there. Well, what's thirty seconds? That's the time it takes to get out of their cars, isn't it? Yeah, drive a block or so, and they were they were on the scene already. They were waiting and and ready for this presentation, and it it looks like a lot like that last Fort Hood shooter on Craigslist. He had answered that ad on Craigslist, acting for an act, asking for an actor. And um, if you look at that presentation, it looks like he was an actor and somebody put uh, live rounds in his gun and, and he ended up dead, but he thought he was acting in the beginning because the Craigslist ad said that he was going to facilitate a production. And these Craigslist ads are all over the Internet asking for actors to facilitate these types of productions. And then once we find them and call attention to them, immediately they're taken down. But, but it's very interesting that the SWAT team happened to be on the scene of this one, and he happened to be a not a citizen, not a not a the average Joe. He happened to be a TSA agent. Yeah, I wonder if he uh, was hurting for money. He was a former TSA agent back 2002, 2003. Right, and then what happened? You know, and, and they don't uh, you know they don't go elsewhere a lot. Once they're trained, they're trained. That's a lot of wasted training to just jump right out of that. They're usually transferred over elsewhere. And it doesn't say he lost his job for any reason or anything. So I'm assuming that he went uh, deeper into the federal rabbit hole there. But we'll have more information as it comes out. Hopefully, unless it's just uh, consensus reality, they're going to feed the uh, sheeples. Now, there's interesting happenings in Manila right now. And uh, we found Senate and, and the House of Representatives guilty of genocide and human trafficking. And in Manila, Philippines, the uh, president has stepped in in front of Senate from the Rappler.com. Drillin asked for courtesy, quote, don't make arrests at the Senate. Senate president points out that the senators will only be under preventative suspension for 90 days. After 90 days, they can file bills and hold hearings even if they're in detention. Manila, Philippines, quote, not a matter of law, but of courtesy. If the Sandiganbayan issues an arrest warrant against the three senators accused of plunder, Senate President Franklin Drillon said he will not allow them to be arrested in the Senate building, quote, as a matter of institutional courtesy. So here's a clergy. Here's their clergy stepping in front of them. And he's going to take some bullets for the Senate accused of plunder. How's that for uh, consensus reality and, and uh, acts of commerce and private acts? So here they are. They don't want to take their comeuppance. And they're putting the president in the, fi in the line of fire in the Philippines. Yeah, I'm sick of it. It's interesting that he... He'd step in front of them. Why is he protecting them? You know what? What value? What are they holding over his head? Right. Uh, how much are they paying him? Right. Who knows? How did he win the presidential election? No human being has ever elected anybody. It's all by the doctrine of election and uh, the electoral colleges, which are their peers. 
the corporations, colleges, churches. These are the folks that elect government officials. And, and um, president makes it to the White House after winning for a very long time, keeping secrets, knowing when to keep their mouths shut and when to speak. And many, many, many different variants. But they uh, sure as heck not elected. You know, there's another one on ABC news.go.com uh, chiropractor suspected of killing fifth wife charged with capital murder uh, and the name has to be fifth wife? something yeah uh, Warslager's third wife Gloria Potts who was tracked down on Facebook by Sharon Yeoman said she too was traumatized by her former husband quote I felt like I was being poisoned Potts said in a 2020 interview in September Potts also recalled one night from years earlier when she was asleep, quote, and he hit me in the back of the head with a mallet, then his hand came and covered my nose and mouth, she added. Potts said she went to the hospital but told them she had fallen in the tub. She and Walt Slager did not divorce until 10 years later, and she didn't tell anyone this version of the story until the time of their divorce when she also got a restraining order, she said. The murder charge isn't the first time Warschlager has been charged with a crime. Nearly 20 years ago, police found Warschlager standing across the street from his chiropractic office watching it burn. He claimed he had been trapped inside and that someone was trying to kill him. Warschlager was later convicted of arson. He received 15 years probation but no prison time. So he's got a nice little criminal history there. Some threats and, and harm against another human being and course he's beneficial to politics so they let him go and go and go until he killed one a human being that is and that is in accordance with national security of course stemming from the national security act it's nice to see that he's charged with capital murder but it's sad to see that he actually had to kill somebody before anybody acted you know he's already harmed a human being did you see that school shooting in seattle the college yeah one died uh Three harmed, I think. It's terrible. I was reading more on that one, and uh, it's maintained he was under the care of psychiatrists once again. Did you see that? He was also uh, allegedly uh, had been studied up on the Columbine incident. And it's all just festered. Festered, festered, and, and um, you know, we'll have more news on this one as it breaks. Again, um, that just came across my desk just a little bit ago here. and It was very interesting to read that he had a long history of mental health issues, maintaining that he's under the care of a psychiatrist, which, of course, is, is the back end of all these murders. You know, he's got not only psych psychiatric uh, indoctrination, psychological warfare maintained by these psychiatrists, who are also found guilty of genocide along with their handlers and directors. But on top of that, these medications, you know, the, these prescriptions. Does it say what kind of medications he was on there? Not yet. Not yet. This is still early in the story, so I'm, I'm assuming they'll come out and blame something. Well, they never blame the uh, pharmaceuticals, though, because they want to sell those. Absolutely. The economy runs on all of this psychological warfare. Sick. Well, the general in Libya, I know, I already did that one. Um, there's some crazy stuff going on in Pennsylvania. Um, an update to the Bob Bullis family. Bob Bullis family members charged in minute minute investigation. This is in Lewisburg. A uh, well-known Scranton area businessman and several members of his family have been hit with theft and theft charges from the state attorney general's office. Pennsylvania Attorney General Kathleen Kane announced charges against Minutemen Companies and its owner, Brian Bullis, along with family members Bob Bullis Sr., Robert Bullis Jr., Deborah Bullis, Julie Bullis, and Sophie Gregory. The attorney general claims Minutemen Companies illegally dumped waste products from shell gas drilling and defrauded clients by overbilling. Now get this, he was a, uh, the charges come after evidence was presented to a statewide grand jury that recommended criminal charges. Last year, state agents raided Minutemen 
Environmental Services in Milton, a company that hauls fluid and equipment for the national gas industry. On Friday, Bullis family members appeared in Union County Court to face charges. Most of the Bullis family members did not have anything to say after they left the Union County Courthouse in Lewisburg, but Mountaintop attorney Deborah Bullis said she had a lot of comments. Quote, I'm not going to give them on the advice of my counsel, but thank you, she said. So it's a family of attorneys, corporations pretending to be a nice environmentally friendly corporation, dumping everything wherever, cashing in on the back end, both the front and back end. They're dumping this garbage, getting rid of it. Everything's free. They're getting insurance payments to get rid of it. And then on the back end, they're attorneys. They also get what's created when people get sick. They own the hospitals. They're trustees on the boards. They own the medical industry. They're trustees on the boards. So they're always cashing in until now. It says Minuteman Environmental Service owner Brian Bullis is charged with insurance fraud. Prosecutors say he and his father, Scranton businessman Bob Bullis Sr., defrauded insurance companies out of a half million dollars. That's only on the front end. But uh, it's it's nice to see that they're they're actually being held accountable for these things. Yeah, it would be even nicer when those money started filtering back down to, uh, to, you know... General welfare. General welfare and the people that have been embezzled from all these years. Absolutely. Globally. Absolutely. You got the one handy. Uh, I read it on the show I did Wednesday. Um, lawyers leaving the bar in record numbers. That was out of uh, Irish news. Yeah, I'll go find the it. Independent... I think, and um, that's just a, an interesting thing to note. What's going on there in Indiana? They got 180 lawyers suspended over CLE fee or IOLTA violations. They're so cool. It's the Indiana Supreme Court on Thursday suspended 180 lawyers who failed to pay attorney registration fee. Meet continuing legal education requirements or submit certification of interest on lawyers trust accounts. That's my favorite. So the order listed 108 Indiana attorneys and 72 attorneys with out-of-state addresses. Attorneys now have a role of attorney's status of suspension pending and the order gives them a little more than a month to correct deficiencies. It's just beautiful. Since the genocide order and um, then the related fallout, you know, in January, uh, they came in and, and Debar came in and said, you know what, we're going to make it a requirement that all attorneys get psychological evaluations mandatorily along with their continuing education. Now, it's nice to see that these attorneys, they don't want to continue their education anymore. They don't want to be attorneys if they have to get a psych eval. As well as a seizure on the IELTS Trust, which is beautiful. We put a seizure on the clerical goods last March. So it's nice to see that being facilitated finally. <coughs> These trusts have never been taxed. They're, they're uh, interest trust accounts. They're not the principal balance. They're just the interest that's earned on these trust accounts. And these attorneys have been cashing it in for far, far too long. That um, Irish News one was also so beautiful. From the independent IE, lawyers now leaving bar and record numbers. <coughs> record numbers of barristers are leaving the law library as a surge of new lawyers, and the downturn in the economy takes its toll. The exodus is affecting the younger end of the bar where 25% of the law library have less than five years experience and are struggling to make ends meet. More than 650 barristers have less, left since 2007 and so on average are taking a leave of absence from the bar each month, twice the figure in 2009. But the numbers leaving for good are believed to be much higher than the official figures as many barristers are still paying the library's subscription fees to maintain their status even though they're no longer in practice. It's just interesting. It's, it's been, these are beautiful days to know that Hussein's on the run. That we need a song that uh, is relative. And so far, I haven't seen one. Yeah, well, I did one a long time ago. About Satan being on the run? Uh, yeah. Aww. We did that song. Head, no, 
His uh, heads are going to roll. Oh, I'm going to have to. I love For Who the Bell Tolls. I mean, that's a good one. But uh, now the bell's no longer tolling. It's it's happening. Did you see that one about the 91-year-old man that ran over the woman's leg with the ride of the lawnmower during a fight? Yeah. I thought that was beautiful, and I really like the comments on this one. Um, this poor elderly man, he's 91 years old. Apparently, um, this is happening in Indianapolis, it looks like, Indiana, uh, from wishtv.com. Uh, Vigo County, Indiana, police said a woman had to be airlifted to the hospital after a 91-year-old man ran over her leg with a rider lawnmower during a fight on Friday afternoon. According to the Vigo County Sheriff's Department, the 59-year-old woman and the man are family members who have been involved in a long-time dispute over some property. Witnesses told police the, w police the woman drove her Jeep through the man's yard in the 4600 block of South State Road 63. The man then confronted her in the driveway while on the riding lawnmower. Police said the verbal fight escalated when the woman got out of her jeep with a machete. As the man turned the riding lawnmower, the woman, the mower deck ran over the woman's lower leg. Police said her foot was severely injured. Neighbors called 911 and administered first aid until emergency responders arrived at the scene, according to the sheriff's department. It calls her a victim here, but she's not a victim. She got out of her vessel with a machete. She was intent on harming him and he self-defended and he happened to be riding the lawnmower at that time. And it's so beautiful. The comment sections on this, the, the human beings are all around defending him. You know, there's some agents who say, oh, lock him up, lock him up. What did he do wrong? But there's more humanity on there commenting than anything. And that, that is something just so profound to see. Oh, beautiful. good. Yeah, well, it's normal now to see women walk around with machetes. Yeah, driving up onto lawns. It's just it's crazy, but they're what being held. What was she even ticked off about him again? Property before? dispute. Over property. Oh. She was going to harm a human being with a machete over property. Things again, yeah. Things, Things over human beings. That's what it's all about. With these attorneys and the psychopaths. Right. All, all like, yeah, um... Let's see, over at the Daily Mail, uh, the UK, new breed of piranha women who are preying on rich men to get them pregnant, warns lawyer. So, uh, what this story goes into is uh, uh, women that uh, just marry for money, you know, and get pregnant for money. Uh, Wealthy men are being tricked into bed by single women who deliberately get pregnant because they view a baby as a career option. A top lawyer warned yesterday. An attorney. attorney. Yeah, that's her best friend up until now. Yeah. The attorneys are turning on these females. It's, it's just profound. Right. They give a nice name there over in the UK like lawyer. But yeah. Barrister too. A turn. Look up the word a turn on etymology online. Soaring numbers of men are being forced to part with their money once they have been ensnared in this way by pretty young females. They are seen as easy prey by devious women who have no desire to work and equate a baby to a trophy and a meal ticket to a gourmet life for the next 18 to 21 years. Uh, Prior see. to this, they were enabled by the courts. Courts were given that order. Oh, we'll restrain him. You don't have to deal with him after this. You know, you did your function. These predators, namely man-eating women intent on securing a cushy lifestyle, have been dubbed piranhas. It is a term that has been borrowed by lawyer Diane Benuzzi. To, she's a female lawyer, too. It's interesting. To describe women who flaunt themselves in the hope of snapping up a high-flying gentleman, whether he is married or not. They will then lure the unassuming man into having unprotected sex under the pretense they cannot become pregnant or they're on the pill. Last night, Mrs. Benuzzi said increasing numbers of women are shying away from work and marriage and looking instead for easy financial sources. Uh, what's, what's probably interesting about this, a lot of the wealthy people are usually bankers and attorneys anyways, so... Yeah, stop learning. <laughs> 
uh, let's see. Uh, she said, marriage doesn't seem to have the same resonance it once had. Instead, women want a baby. Babies are becoming a lot more fashionable. They're becoming trophies. For some women, having a baby is a career move, and they said um, they're paid to stay at home uh, to look after their own babies. That's ridiculous on its face there as well. Sick. If they want children, if they're human beings, they don't need to be paid to have children. I mean, that's just sick. I really like the description of the piranha women. It describes her almost like one of those trapdoor spiders. You know, that thing digs a hole and, and waits for its prey to come by, offering it whatever it likes. You know, candy and, and whatever else, shaking its tail to get what it wants, and along comes its meal. I, I really like that description. Yeah, yeah, well, it's uh, very interesting here. It, it's, from an attorney, it's, uh, like you said, they were always the woman's best friend here under the, you know, uh, special drawing rights that these entities can extract from the IMF for uh, the funding of uh, feminism. Okay. So, uh, Miss Benuzzi runs a large matrimonial law firm in Birmingham specializing in high-value divorce cases and has over 30 years of hypothecating experience. Wow, so she's, she's trying to redeem herself. This is called redemption. Not repenting, redemption. She's like, oh, I made enough money at that and I'm going to get caught, so... Might as well step out while the getting's good. Is that what it looks like to you? <laughs> it says her company is dealing with an increasing number of cases involving single women falling um, pregnant. Like it's some sort of a disease or something. And chasing the fathers of their children for financial support. Mrs. Benuzzi says she has seen a huge hike over the last five years and canny women using the courts to gain financial support for 20 years or more. I mean, it's actually common practice since the 1980s when they implicated no-fault divorces and, and all of these things. And it's just it's profound to see that these females are no longer have a meal ticket. And that's the requirement under the public law. Children are not objects. They're not to be bought and sold. They're not to be held hostage. And, in uh, demand for ransom and, and all of these tricks that these females get away with and, and up until now. When the attorney starts turning on Eve there, that's not a good sign for Eve. Looks like she's going to go right into the trash where she belongs. Yeah, well, you'll have that. People don't want to pay attention to this new schematic or gonna fall uh, victim to it well but Jesus said it the best you're known for your works and actions it's already done these females that have been using children as pawns in a game are gonna be held accountable they already did it <coughs> same thing with these priests former uh, Louisville priest sentenced on sex, sorry about that, folks. Oh, these advertisements, and they don't allow me to mute them out. Yeah, uh, well, it's ridiculous. Sometimes you have to. Okay, well, just one moment, folks. Oh. At least it was recorded. Just charge them. I'll turn my heading. <clears throat> Former Louisville pre sentence on sex abuse conviction from WLKY.com. Former priest convicted of sexually molesting two teenage boys is going to prison. A judge sentenced the 64 year old James Shrook to 15 years in prison Friday while Shrook pleaded for mercy. This is, this is a case. Has been going on for several years, but Shook hasn't served a day in jail because of his poor health. To 
defense attorneys kept uh, try to keep it that way on Friday, but the judge said Shook had his day in court. Now he's going to prison. Shook was convicted on three counts of sodomy, one count of indecent exposure, and immoral behavior in April. Michael Stansbury said he was one of the victims. Though this case was thrown out because of a technicality, he's followed the case and was fed up with the defense and its ability to keep Shook out of jail. Quote, he's been delaying it for five years now with all these health issues he portrays he has. Well, we found out they have not always been what we were led to believe, said Stansbury. This time around, the poor health argument didn't work. The judge upheld the jury's recommendation, recommended sentence for 15 years in order to trip to prison. Quote, I think this is a wonderful vindication of the courage that they show to come forward and present their claims. This is a happy day for them, and I am happy for them, said Prosecutor John Valley. Now, the prosecuting attorney knew what they were doing, playing these games forever and ever. They were trying to eke as much money as they could out of those federal funds for prosecuting this. And they just wiped the floor with victims as they rent their bodies to each other. Until now, they are no longer going to cash in on these things. And these priests are actually going to be held accountable as well. And speaking of religion, then you see the story about the sword fight and uh, the Sikh temple. The, yeah, the uh, uh, radical Sikhs they call <laughs> yeah. them. The radical Sikhs. Those are CIA operatives. Or maybe we should call them Sikh IA now. It is. Uh, it was so profound to see because Sikhs Sikhs are about the most gentle religion out there. I've never met a Sikh who was mean. I mean, I've they met, can make anything up that they want in the media though absolutely. and they do it's part of their modus operandi absolutely and people but, believe that stuff when they wanted the fbi and cia involvement in manchester england just a few years ago uh they took this group it, it's a prevalent uh muslim society there and they they made a claim in the media to the christians catholics jews and others that are not muslim that do not realize what the muslim religion is and they went through and said that the Muslims were bet-fixing, gambling, and they were all a bunch of alcoholics. And they made a presentation of relative to the 1920s in the United States of America when they were claiming the same thing against the Mafia and everybody else. And, but their failure is that Muslims, Sunni Muslims, are teetotalers. They do not gamble. They do not drink alcohol. They do not do any of those things, but the premise is that the Christianity and Catholics and Jews, they'll believe those claims because they don't speak Arabic. They don't understand any of the language or the culture. And it was quite for profound how they infiltrated Manchester, and this happened just a few years ago. But then now they're doing, they're attempting the same thing with the Sikhs sword fight at the anniversary um, of uh, the uh, Sikh attack, where uh, almost 400 people were killed back then. And and again, that was a CIA promotion. Yeah, more and more of these things are apparently so. Uh, that was in India? Yeah. Yep. And uh, there was a courthouse there too, wasn't it? Was no, it was at a Sikh temple. Oh, a Sikh temple, right. Okay. Well, you know, temple, court, it's about the same thing. Yeah, ball. It's all the same. But yeah, the Sikhs are very gentle people, and they come up with this this uh, radical new, you know, radical Sikhs is just ridiculous on its face. Right. It's the same with radical Muslims and radical Christians and radical Catholics. When you put a Catholic priest up and say, look, it's been sexually abusing children, that guy is not Catholic. He's not adhering to the Bible. It doesn't say in the Bible to, to uh, creep up on children. It doesn't say prey on children. And and that's what people, human beings, need to realize. See, all of these religious indoctrinations, religious theories, all of these things, they're maintained to divide populaces. They're not there to bring people together. It's, it's maintained uh, under the action of secularism. Divide and conquer. And when you have separate cultures, separate languages, that is Babylonian theory. That's the action of Babel. There's a story over at Blacklisted News. 
uh, suggesting that Birdell might be in bed with the CIA. Absolutely. We've known that since the beginning. CIA agent. There have been reports suggesting that Birdell was deep cover spy meant to establish an inside connection with the Haqqani network linked to the Taliban in 2009. Was the recent release of Bergdahl specifically timed with the apparent White House leak of the CIA operative who was chief of the station in Kabul? Absolutely. Why would they compromise, quote, state security and jump into bed with, with others contractually? I mean, we're witness to it, especially, you know, in a political play. The state of Wisconsin, Kenosha County, and all of their actors took Rocco in a political play. They took him as political prisoner to get us to shut up. We cannot contract with no criminal criminal enterprises. Okay. They know that. They know they're a criminal enterprise, and they said they were back in 1777. Right. Now, the United States Incorporated, however had to buy that guy before he spoke what he was going to speak because if they didn't get him out he had dirt on them as a CIA operative that's why he was saved you know Rocco is just we we sit here and laugh because he's John he's he's teaching people he's doing these things just as according to our word we know that you know, he doesn't have dirt on us, and, and, and all of these things, and it's it's just so profound to, to see what they have done and, and why they did it. And and again, the the other criminal enterprise on the other end of that wanted their guys for the same reason. They're all in bed together. They're all in bed together. Yeah, and he is suffering in there, and they're like doing everything to beat him into the... Uh, the, the franchise name, you know, they're uh, coming down on him and trying to, you know, get him the contract, basically. Right. And, and you know, amazingly enough, you know, we, we uh, maintain the charges and, and all of a sudden, you know, Rocco comes through with more evidence in the past tense regarding... You know the same thing that that we've done. I mean, it's it's so profound to see humanity in action and, and what happens when we all really, 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 really speak the same word and and to watch the United States Incorporated scramble around and and um, attempt to cover its proverbial butt is is something really funny to watch. Those things are interesting. Yeah, and show you know just to show people how to touch. They are, they keep voting for this thing called Congress. Of course, under the Atlantic Charter, the U.S. Congress has had world dominion since 1941, which we say over and over again. We've never received uh, any rebuttal denial, to that. Denial or, or evidence Denial from of them directly, right. So I don't even care about people's rebuttal. You can right. rebut whatever you want. Uh, <laughs> in a action of atonement. Yeah, to get over the to overcome the evidence, one must provide evidence and, and there's been no evidence otherwise. But there's a headline here, uh, that uh, all you know, well half of all members of Congress are millionaires. Absolutely. Two hundred and sixty eight of them have an average net worth of a million dollars or more. So, these people aren't representing, yeah, they are representing you, but uh, they're not speaking your word. Absolutely not. And we, we speak your word over to public law, we, you know, and we're uh, tired of this human trafficking and uh, genocide, okay? And speaking of which, uh, CIA put another... A presentation Miguel yesterday in which it uh, looks like to off like between four and five hundred uh, males and male children Boko yeah Boko Haram and, and 
Boko Haram itself is the CIA, it's a CIA operation. Uh, first they kidnapped the, the, all those girls and then they come in at a later time and pretend to be a military force of some kind and offer protection and then they slaughtered all of the men and boys after they engaged the families. And um, at this time, of course, the next step is the CIA comes back in pretending to be the UN and picks up all of the rest of the victims as refugees. And this is the game of politics. Uh, you can read this in their own works. Um, one of such is uh, uh, Post-Conflict Constitutional Drafters Handbook. For example, they, they implicate and promote the war, and then they come in and offer a constitution and all of the, the uh, bells and whistles. And it's the same story of Moses over and over again. Moses and his eight CIA agents go up to the top of the hill, and the CIA agents on the ground start slaughtering everybody, stealing each other's wives and asses. And then the judge comes back down from the top of the hill, and he says, Oh, man, you guys need me. Uh, you need... You need a court, you need hospitalization, you need all of these things, and have I got a deal for you? And Moses offers all of these things, and then the next step is, of course, Leviticus, or the action of taxation. He says, okay, I'll, I'll protect you for a fee. And um, after numerous repetitions of the same Talmudic texts, you got uh, Deuteronomy, in French means second word, second Torah. It's just a second repetition and the required three repeats which is what is known as indoctrination. Doc means to teach, trim means three times. And these, uh, these profound monsters, these hideous things have been maintaining and propagating this for a very very long time and now it's time for humanity to stand and adhere to the public law meaning do no harm, and get rid of the harm from ability to harm humanity. Yeah, there's all these people that are trying to promote the idea of constitutional sheriffs. Well, under the Constitution, they're allowed to engage in private acts and acts of commerce under the Commerce Clause, and that's basically where uh, they got their... Uh, uh, go ahead, uh, go ahead and start uh, human trafficking and uh, committing genocide because uh, everybody's consenting to it. They want their constitution. The constitutional sheriff, uh, he sells surety bonds, which are people, which is human trafficking. He sells them to the attorneys so they can be further parted out uh, in um, court process. Okay. So we don't need constitutional sheriffs. We don't want constitutional sheriffs. No, those are FBI agents. We want sheriffs that adhere to the public law. That's it. Absolutely. And so, unfortunately, all of you constitutional sheriffs out there, are going to find yourselves out of work here before long. Or falsely accused of something by your peers. I mean... Uh, oh yeah. That's today, that poor sheriff was was gunned down by a federal agent. You know the Georgia courthouse shooting. That was a federal agent that gunned the, a good sheriff down. Well, these things are planned out, in, in my opinion. Absolutely. And that sheriff was probably on their target. Yeah. For whatever reason. Right. The SWAT team was right there, so we couldn't escape. They were within 30 seconds. They got away. him to take out the sheriff. They probably had some dirt on one of the corporate council attorneys. Absolutely, and that's the way that it works. And uh, as soon as they took out the sheriff, well, here's the SWAT team to uh, clean up the mess. Yeah, they were on there. They were there. 30 seconds away. They were there so that he could not get away. They wanted him dead for some reason. And that, that is, it's terrifying that this is happening to law enforcement by the federal agents. These are federal agents adhering to federal policy according to the confederated state. Confederacy is defined in Black's Law Dictionary as a criminal enterprise. Federal agents are criminal enterprise. 
This thing, these things have to end. There's some uh, five reports for the daily recap at policemisconduct.net. Uh, San Jose, California, police officer posted $20,000 bail and was released from custody following his arrest for felony possession of marijuana with intent to sell after a stash of pot was discovered inside the storage space associated with him. In Winston County, Alabama, Sheriff Sergeant faces a charge of manufacturing methamphetamine. He is charged with second degree manufacturing of methamphetamine. Cedar City, Utah police officer was charged for driving under the influence for allegedly leaving the scene of an accident in his patrol car. Huntington, West Virginia police officer sues, says other officer attacked him with pepper spray, smashed his face into concrete. Huntington, West Virginia, Charleston police officer says a Huntington police officer attacked him in downtown Huntington pepper spraying him, smashing his face in the concrete, and punching him in the head. Well, oh, that's a duplicate there they got. Yeah, we need to, you know, well, all of you good law enforcement, please reach out. And, and um, as we've spoken a bit before, Matthew 6, do not speak your intent. Do not go to the criminal enterprise and say, I know that you're a criminal enterprise. You guys are law enforcement. Come to the United States court this court will protect you. We'll stand between you and whatever so that you cannot be preyed on and you cannot be beaten up or whatever they're doing to you guys now. And, you know, guaranteed that I, I, I give my life for you. We're not here for the psychopath. We're not here for the Confederate state. We're here for, on behalf of humanity. Oh, let's see, uh, trouble in the L.A. jail system. Deputy described beating inmates unprovoked, slapping them, shooting them with a taser gun, and aggressively searching them to pick a fight, something he learned on the job. Yep, that's a federal agent. He would huddle with other jail guards to get their story straight and write up reports with bogus scenarios justifying the brutality. Yep. If the inmate had no visible injuries... He wouldn't report the use of force, period. Yep. He did this. He did all this with impunity. Former Los Angeles County Sheriff's Deputy Gilbert Michael testified Tuesday knowing that even if inmates reported the abuse, it wouldn't go anywhere. Right. If they were to put it in writing and drop it in a complaint box, it was his fellow deputies who opened that box, too. Right. And they're directed by corporate counsel to do these things. And they're acting at their behest. We have reams and reams and reams of evidence of these works. Including our very own Rockaway. At the inception, on January 31st, that conversation, the whole interaction was, was recorded by me live. After that, McHenry County finally pulled their hands out. Well, the agent in Kenosha County, Wisconsin, came back in and had her officers that were under her employ, her federal agents, write new police reports maintaining a new scenario. And first she penned her hand, and then those officers penned their hands to their documentation and her writing. We have reams of this type of evidence. This goes on every single day. And again, you go back to the corporate counsel attorney that I spoke with on the phone. We have to have a, di a diagnosis, he tells me. Every time that these agents, these federal agents are injuring anybody, they're bringing them into law. They're cashing in through the International Classification of Diseases and Disorders. This is how these municipalities make their money. This is how the federal government makes its money. This is how corporate counsel discharged congressional bankruptcy. And I'm, I'm glad to see this sheriff's detectives coming out. You know, I, I sure as heck don't want him on the public law side on the payroll because he has done those things, and he did do those things for a bag of silver. His name is Judas. From the witness stand, Michael 
broad-shouldered with short cropped hair. Typical uh, militarized looking cop thug. Described the culture among deputies guarding the high security floors of the jails that led to excessive force and frequent cover-ups. He matter-of-factly recounted incidents in which he said he and at least five other sheriff's employees brutalized inmates on the third or 3,000th floor of Men's Central Jail, then falsified reports to legitimize their actions. Absolutely. We watched that with, again, Rocco. In the, in the latest uh, agent report, this agent said that Rocco was only tased one time because he was not um, adhering to their orders. I have the recorded conversation that maintains there was never such an order. They didn't even identify him until much later, after they got his fee schedule. Prior to that, they were looking for this Patrick guy. They were running through Rocco's house looking for Patrick. That is on the audio. Yeah, I'm glad we got the uh, evidence there, too, that they have knowledge of the fee schedule right from the very beginning. Right. So you know when the fees start? Right at that moment. Right. Within an hour, they were served, and we had them served by our process server. So it wasn't like we, you know, gave it to them, and then it went missing. Our process server made sure that they were served within an hour. And somebody's still racking up a bunch of charges. Absolutely, and it's it's just profound what they've done. And then watching all of the fallout since then, and and this agent and these these federal agents run around scrambling and attempt to get out of it, and then change their story once, twice, three times. Get more officers in there from elsewhere to say different stories. That's been the most profound. Because these, these federal agents have actually put their hand in something that um, is quite terrifying. However, our law enforcement sees the same things. And it's not like, you know, these, these law enforcement officers or agents that are pending their hand to the false allegations are not going to be held as accountable as these directors directing those, those uh, reports. But they will get what's coming to them for writing those reports in the first place and pending their hands to false allegations. Yeah, let's see, I got 14 more reports from the 4th. We want to go into those. Uh, what's we got an what's your game plan one here? on the Trinidad Express. Um, <laughs> This is, uh, it's, it's quite uh, interesting. So this is from Tobago at TrinidadExpress.com. Doctor charged with cocaine possession. A doctor who police claim tried to smuggle 17 kilograms of cocaine in two water heaters will appear in the Arima Magistrates Court tomorrow charged with possession of illegal drugs. The doctor, police said, is attached to the Tobago Regional Health Authority. He's a high up there on the ranking uh, totem pole there. Police allege the doctor was attempting to ship the two water heaters to Jamaica late last year at Piarco, no, excuse me, Piarco International Airport when the cocaine valued at $8.6 million was discovered inside the items. The doctor at the time denied having any knowledge of the cocaine and was released, police said. However, on Friday, officers arrested the doctor in Tobago, and he was flown to Trinidad and charged with the offenses. Police said in 2012, the doctor was also charged with stealing medication from the strange Grand Hospital and attempting to sell it. So it looks like they're getting the higher-ups now, um, and we've watched this in the insurance and uh, mental health, and, and now personally these doctors are being nailed for these things because, you know, they're... They're a major part of the human trafficking schematic. They're the ones that are there to diagnose injury. Right, and when they do such, they're picking you up uh, through the ICD-10. And, uh, you know, there you are. You're uh, prisoner of war. Right in the, uh, you know, prisoner of war schematic there. 1864 Geneva Convention. Picking you right up as long as you consent, and and um, it's nice to see that 
one of the regional health authorities are, are going now now. Well, it's not that's not chump change. Yeah, good. I didn't read that one. It's nice to see. This one, uh, this pastor, it was nice to see. And I know that you know, I post them on my wall and people are upset because they're getting off on mental health stuff. But that was Hitler's baby, folks. So this one is on the blog.al.com. Judge rules former Gardendale pastor charges killing wife, injuring daughter, not guilty due to mental illness. Gardendale, Alabama. Jefferson County judge today declared Terry Lee Greer not guilty by reason of mental disease or defect in last year's shooting death of his wife and wounding his, of his daughter. The ruling came after testimony from a state mental health expert. A prosecutor also read a statement regarding what happened in the morning of the shooting, including that the pastor was acting strangely and had told his wife, quote, what if we all just drive up to heaven today, end quote. Jefferson County Circuit Judge Tommy Nail said Greer poses a danger to himself and others and committed him to a state institution. He will be held at, at least initially, at Taylor Hardin Secure Medical Facility in Tuscaloosa. Greer, 55, had been charged with murder and attempted murder in the January 10th shooting death of his wife, 52-year-old Lisa Greer, and the wounding of his then 18-year-old daughter, Susanna. Dr. Glenn King today said Greer had a brain injury from a car wreck and fall in October 2012. Greer suffered from cardiovascular dementia and had started that had started a few years earlier. He was taking medication for his heart, which can also affect a person's mental state, and the minister was also depressed. King said he reviewed hospital records, police statements, reports from other doctors, and tested Greer as well. King described all of those conditions as the, quote, perfect storm. King testified Greer could not distinguish right from wrong at the time of the shooting and should be placed in a secure mental facility to protect himself and others. Deputy District Attorney Laura Poston and Nail Zauser did not oppose the request to have Greer declared not guilty by reason of mental disease or defect and placed in a secure mental facility. Quote, I feel the judge has made the only decision it could have made, she said. Now, Greer is now in the custody of Alabama's Department of Mental Health and is likely to remain there the remainder of his life. Now, Hitler's propaganda there and the psychological industry, it's, it's you know, in most people's minds, it would probably be better to be beaten to death all at once rather than to live uh, the rest of their days in a mental institution which is why Hitler used the psychological industry as he did. It didn't come from Nazi Germany, it came from the United States incorporated through such as the 1924 Racial Integrity Acts that Virginia passed, that was Congress. And um, you know, it, again to all the folks that are upset over the not guilty finding, it's not like you think. He's going to live out his his own hell for the rest of his life, locked up in a mental institution, which is just fine by me. That's his accountability, that uh, according to his works. Yep, and. Um... It's not going nowhere. It's still locked up. Right. And he will be for a very long time. Under the Department of Health and Human Services, the function of it is to eke out as much money as you can out of the victims that go in there. And uh, at the long, at the end of that run, the insurance is used up and everything, and people suddenly die. Well, we got. <clears throat> Boy, got uh, attorneys being charged left and right. Uh, we could hit on some of those. Absolutely. Top stories. If you like, uh, whatever you think. Um, yep. I know we got uh, here. Here's one at Fox. This is Fox2Now.com. St. Louis attorney charged with theft. It's funny. St. Louis area attorney was arrested after allegedly caught removing papers from a court file. 
Clayton, oh, yeah. Clayton, please say, Scott Elnerman had been ordered to pay for an email communication system between him and his ex-wife. But Elnerman went to the courthouse and removed that order from the file. Witnesses saw him take the paper, and he's now charged with theft. Right. Now, that one was very interesting to read, because actually it's not just theft. Now, this one... Alteration of court record. Right. Under 18 U.S.C. subsection 1506, theft or alteration of record of process or false bail. Now, to all law enforcement, whoever feloniously steals, takes away, alters, falsifies, or otherwise avoids any record, writ, process, or other proceeding in any court of the United States whereby any judgment is reversed, made void, or does not take effect or whoever acknowledges or procures to be acknowledged in any court any recognizance, bail, or judgment in the name of any other person not privy to consenting to the same shall be fined under this statute under this title or prison not more than five years or both. It's a felony. Now it's not not a simple theft charge here for that attorney. You know, he, he knows the law, he's an attorney. Ignorance of the law is no excuse according to a citizen. Now, what do you, what do, you do when, a, when an attorney who, uh, you know, makes it his living to practice the law, you know, does things like that? It's not, that's not going to fly, and he needs to be charged with uh, theft and false bail under 18 U.S.C. 1506. Obstructing justice simulating legal process, you know, there's, there's many things that go along with what he was attempting to do. Now, uh, SeattlePI.com, ex-DC lawmaker, Brown gets three years for bribes. Former District of Columbia Council member Michael A. Brown was sentenced Thursday to more than three years in prison for taking over $50,000 FRNs and bribes in an undercover FBI sting, a comparatively stiff sentence from a judge who said, quote, we cannot have city government run this way, end quote. It's ridiculous. He's advertising his, his services. <laughs> Moses, they need to start wearing those funny shoes with the pointy things on them and the jingly hats when they put on these presentations. 39-month sentence imposed by Chief U.S. District Judge Richard W. Roberts nearly matched prosecutors' requests for 43-month prison term. The most Brown could have received under the terms of his plea bargain. Brown's lawyers had sought a more lenient sentence. Brown had served a single term on the D.C. Council after winning election in 2008, apologized to his constituents and to his family. Two interesting days. No one pled guilty. Good. Yeah, well, let's see. Uh, let's see, what else you got here? I got a sticky, uh -oh. sticky computer here. Sticky computer. Uh, we had um, no, a couple of them there. That 89-year-old tennis pro, that was, that was something that... Uh, it was interesting this week. From the New York.cbslocal.com, 89 year old tennis pro looks back on career as an undercover work with CIA. New York. Fred Kovaleski is a tennis pro who spent a decade using the sport as a decoy for the CIA. And now, as one of the world's oldest tennis players, he's begun talking about his past. His ABC. As CBS's 2, Emily Smith reported, Kovaleski, 89, remains a master of the tennis court, and he tells you how it is. He says, I'm probably the best 85 and older in the world, and I'm going over to Europe in another two days to play in the World Championships. Kovaleski is a tennis champion whose lifelong love for the sport afforded him a college scholarship and ultimately a job with the CIA. He said tennis was, quote, absolutely, end quote, his cover. Kowalewski got the gig without even really wanting or trying for it. He traveled to Europe for a tennis match representing the United States. During an ob obligatory meeting with the U.S. Counselor of Embassy in Egypt, he received an offer to work undercover. So, of course, that's what those obligatory 
meetings are means of garnering Judas himself. So and there's a lot of those. Okay, and uh, uh, let's see here. We've got an Indiana Attorney General's office uh, filed a lawsuit against former Wabash County Deputy Clerk. I'm good. Cover, um, trying to recover more than $75,000 that uh, was embezzled as she worked as the as the clerk. So, maybe uh, maybe a fall Sounds like position. It. Fall guy position. Um, and anyways, uh, Let's see. Sarah Chamberlain is accused of misappropriating taxpayer money before she was terminated. Jury trial set for July 15th. Yeah, I could go either way. You know, we talk a lot about genocide and the eight stages of genocide and what that entails. And of course, the one of the latter stages is denial. You deny that your country ever did anything like that. No, it can't happen. And um, from the raw story this week, rawstory.com, almost 800 babies were buried in a septic tank at Catholic-run Irish home for unmarried mothers. Almost 800 babies and children were buried in a mass grave in Ireland near a home for unmarried mothers run by nuns according to new research Wednesday which shows sheds more light of course there's another advertisement on the Irish Catholic Church's troubled past death records suggest 796 children from newborns to eight-year-olds were deposited in a grave near a Catholic run home for unmarried mothers during the 35 years it was operated from 1925 to 1961 Historian Kathleen Corliss, who made the discovery, says her study of death record for the state Mary's home in Trump in County Galway suggests that a former septic tank near the home was a mass grave. The septic tank, full to the brim with bones, was discovered in 1975 by locals when concrete slabs covering the tank broke up. Until now, locals believe the bones mainly stem from the Great Irish Famine of the 1840s when hundreds of thousands perished. St. Mary's run by the Bond Secured Sisters, which was a French group, that was the time, uh, was one of the several such mother and baby homes in early 20th century Ireland. Now, you need to study back to the French Revolution when feminism first was a model theory. And um, this is what they do, folks. They get women to engage with the political structure. They get their families to turn on them, send them off to these churches, send them off to these girls' homes, send them off to, you know, youth services, send them off to juvenile homes, send them off wherever. And these these girls are preyed on, and their children are absolutely horrifyingly preyed on. And it's always been the same, very same exact schematic. And it's not time now that humanity stands up on behalf of all victims, all of humanity. You know, we've got to get the psychopath out from amongst, amongst us. We've got to stop buying into these concepts, stop buying into these religious indoctrinations, stop buying into the hearts and minds. It's a war tactic um, to traumatize human beings and then offer them security blankets or traumatize human beings and then offer them the Red Cross. You know, and as all of our listeners know, 1864 Geneva Convention is what established the Red Cross as a, uh, a hospital to, in order to pick up prisoners of war. Well, these things have to be, have to be stopped. And it's going to take humanity to stop it on a large scale, globally. Not just us. Yeah, that's so that brings up, you know, a point about some of these processes out there that are asking to have their status changed under the Geneva Convention. That can never happen. 
Right, it's so just you, right that 1929 that you can't. Yeah. So, you know, you people out there, uh, I don't know, what is it, the uh, Boris the Spider uh, process? Yeah, the, yeah uh, Donnelly Ray. and. Please change my status. Yeah. And it's not going to happen. No. And a prisoner of war is somebody without a country. Period. If you are patronizing a bankrupt corporation, you're without a country. You're without a homeland. So corporations, according to the 1929 Geneva Convention, are picking you up as prisoners of war. I'm not asking you to patronize me. I'm not asking you to patronize Bo. I'm asking you to patronize your own house. If you're missing a country and you're being picked up as prisoner of war because you're lost and you don't have a homeland, patronize your own house. Stop patronizing the House of Representatives. It's not hard. Jesus said, call no man your father. You patronize your own house. You're the child of God. You are not a child of the House of Representatives. You're not a child of Senate. You're not a child of Parliament or some sports team that you're, you're patriotic to. You're not a child of a flag. You're God's children. Patronize your own house. You've got to come out of her. Well, here's an example of how good they're uh, actually doing for you. Uh, one third of young Americans live back home with their parents. Full one third of young Americans aged 18 to 34 now live at home with their parents. What happened? That's okay. exactly what it says in the Th Memorandum 200. Thanks to the sparse job market. And anyways, this is over to blacklisted news. It's part of the depopulation program. You can read about this in Memorandum 200 written by Dr. Henry Kissinger to the National Security Council in 1974. It says you'll be doing this. If they do this... You'll do this. They know exactly how you are going to behave. As long as you're taking up those titles and you're possessed by constitutional theory, you are a predictable product. Stop being predictable. Jesus said, divest yourself of all that possesses you. Stop protecting those, those fictional titles. Stop asking for your rights and benefits in all variants of those fictional titles. Stop being the fiction. You are a state of being. You don't need a title to define you. They require you to have a title, a definition, and description so that they can move you around on the chessboard. Don Ray's gone so far as to get people to fill out that UCC1 form. That's what a sheriff does. Law enforcement fills out UCC1s when there's a lien placed upon anything. It says that the creditor is so-and-so and the debtor is so-and-so. And if your name is in the debtor position, that means you owe whoever the creditor is. It doesn't mean you're going to get anything handed to you. It says you're a debtor. No, Donna Ray's going to get hers too. For those that deliver them up, they have the greater damnation. Okay, but some of these other processes that people are jumping on, it sounds good to them. It's because uh, they're putting their name in the... Uh, not the not the debtor position, but the creditor position. Right. Okay. And that's where all this secured party creditor, creditor. nonsense comes right. about. Okay, so 
Is there a property deed that says that is your property? No. How can you be the creditor if they're holding the deed? Now, under our process, forgiveness in the executor doc, those are both deeds, property deeds. And you're coming in and you're obliterating the original franchise and you're facilitating what is known as a hostile takeover of that franchise. In a deed, you're conveying property from the United States Incorporated to you, the executor, the owner of the property. If you no longer want to patronize it, don't do the pa don't do the process if you want to patronize that thing and call it your father. But if you want to patronize your own house and expatriate out of the United States Incorporated, the lawful way, not the legal way, the lawful way. You can find that information at chooseyourside.org and tammypepperman.org in the document section. Yeah, all their paperwork is designed to corral you back into their, their you know, little system there. They got, uh, got it all locked up. Oh, you got a complaint? Oh, yeah, here, fill out this form. Okay. And you got to read the fine print of the things that go behind the, you know, scenes there. You know, and from the beginning, you were assigned at birth. Now, you don't want to argue that birth certificate itself. That's a losing argument. That's a, it's a shoe argument. Okay, what I came into my case and argued was the assignment ability. Okay, that's the real matter. You know, uh, really, really, what is the point of the matter? Is they want that assignment ability, and that's why they will fight tooth and nail, like they are with Rocco, saying, "Well, that's not your name. No, you're this franchise name here, right here." Even though he divested all that title properly, went through all the uh, correct steps to notify everybody up leading up to and inclusive of the fee schedule. They had notice of the fee schedule when the marshal within an hour of the marshal coming in and beating his door down. On uh, again another void order Okay. Uh, we saw, we saw, we've seen these things time and time again. Where sheriffs, marshals, acting on a so-called order, and there's no signatures or anything on there. It's rubber stamped by the sheriff's department. Somebody in the sheriff's department takes. A stamper, and they stamp these papers. Well, in the case of Rocco, there wasn't even a court order. It was on the um, verbal of the agent Leach Schwartz. We have that evidence as well. Yeah. That was part of the um, interesting exploration phase. Yep, 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 and. So, again, it's just, it's a travesty that people even call it, you know, the justice system anymore because it is, it's, it's just us, all right, J-U-S-T-U-S, us meaning Congress, all right, that's the only thing that this, their whole system works for. So if you fill out any of their paperwork, you're bowing down to their system. You get a notary, okay? Look up counter deed in Black's Law. You'll probably find it under deed. Then you go to counter deed, all right? And it, 
invalidates your your own action. All right. I don't have that definition pulled up right now, but the uh, point of the matter is a notary is a counter deed. Counters your deed. We don't use notaries. We use our, our own authority out of our, our, our own house. Okay. It's all explained in that, that uh, process of the public law zip file that I put up for everybody at the Dropbox. Which is really simplified. I, I really like how you wrote that out and you know, it just took everybody through it step by step. Um, and it, it, uh, it says everything right in there. So, you know, do go to chooseyourside.org and tammypepperman.org. It's in the authorized documents section, of course. And a lot of these things, if you visit uh, the old audios, the archives of the audios, uh, uh, Revolution Radio, of course, has changed its... Uh, YouTube location uh, within the last few months here but on all of the audios are out there uh, just dig right in it might be easier to just listen to we read a lot of the docu documents as we went through the experience you know including you know Philip Simon admitting that he was human trafficking last August and all of these things um, it's been an interesting journey, and, uh, and all of it, it has been documented, fully documented, so that, you know, nobody else had to go through this. Jesus taught us in 1 Corinthians 13 to suffer all things, bear all things, and, and part of that is using our discretion, okay? If I have to suffer these things, we're going to make sure that we have everything on record so that somebody else doesn't have to suffer these things it, it doesn't say that all of us have to suffer these things it says that you know only one of us has to suffer these things and if you learn from the example then that's great you don't have to suffer these things okay and what it says out of Black's Law basically 8th edition I'm reading counter deed a secret deed executed either before a notary or under a private seal that voids, invalidates, or alters a public deed. Okay? So how can anything notarized be under the public law? You can't. It falls under private acts and acts of commerce. Okay, that notary is registered with the state. Okay, and she counterdeeds your work there. It gets thrown under the category of private acts and acts of commerce. So they're allowed to engage in private acts and acts of commerce under the Commerce Clause as long as they don't harm a human being. The problem with that is, though, they are harming human beings. And here's the catch. As a citizen, you are not able to hold them accountable because you're patronizing that thing as your government. How can you hold them accountable when you're claiming that to be your government? Can't. The only way to hold them accountable is to step out of that system. Okay? And hold them, hold their feet to the fire as per the restrictive principle of sovereign immunity. The restrictive principle of sovereign immunity says that if you harm a human being that you don't have any immunity. So I don't care if your name is Barack Obama or Joe Blow. You're both accountable under the public law, per the restrictive principle of sovereign immunity. Okay? Now, Caesar does not like it when his subjects try to do this. Again, look at Rocco's situation. There is nothing 
legal about what they're doing certainly not lawful it's all being done as an act of war absolutely against humanity and it says this in the 1947 National Security Act human beings are the enemy of their state it's not state security it's national security in their own laws, the foreign nation is defined as a corporation. 28 U.S.C. subsection 1603. Okay, over at StarTribune.com, South Dakota U.S. Senate candidate Bosworth arrested, charged with violating election laws. Okay. And here uh, in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Authorities on Wednesday arrested defeated U.S. Senate candidate Annette Bosworth and charged her with multiple counts of perjury and filing false election documents saying she fraudulently attested to gathering voter signatures when she was really on a Christmas or a Christian mission trip to the Philippines. South Dakota Attorney General Marty Jackley charged Bosworth with six counts of perjury and six counts of filing false documents related to election campaign laws. The arrest warrant was served a day after Bosworth lost the Republican primary with just 6% of the vote. The election complaints received by the Secretary of State involve conduct that is serious, deliberate, and must be addressed in order to preserve the integrity of our elections. Yeah, it looks like she was cannibalized. Jackley said in a statement, Because this is a federal election, of, uh, federal elected office, I have and will continue to discuss the investigation with federal authorities. Jackley said the 42-year-old Bosworth was given notice of the warrant Wednesday morning and turned herself into the Minnehaha county jail she was immediately released released okay at a press conference Wednesday afternoon Bosworth called the charges a political intimidation scheme against her by Jack Lee who was initially appointed to this position by former governor Mike Rounds defeated uh, Rounds defeated Bosworth and three other Republicans Tuesday to capture the GOP nomination for the seat being vacated by retiring Democrat Tim Johnson. God, there's still people voting for this stuff. No, there's not. They're just appointing each other and putting on this show. See what they just did? Yeah. They said, oh, you had an election, and she's fraudulent. And poor her, she became the fall guy in this presentation telling the sheeple that they actually have a vote or saying something. That's an uh, interesting story. But, I mean, this certainly garners people uh, to, uh, you know, in, back into the voting schematic, which right. is a, the big trap, and it's a doctrine of election means you're you only have a uh, choice of one. You can't, can't vote for uh, someone in Congress and, uh, you know, patronize your own house. You, can right. only, have, you only have one. Beneficial uh, amounts to end. As long as you're not evidencing yourself to be the heir, you're uh, abstaining your right to be there. Let's see. Uh, see, Jack Lee May announced he would investigate several nomination, uh, nominating petitions submitted by U.S. Senate candidates, including that of Bosworth, after a liberal blogger and conservative state lawmaker raised concerns about the legitimacy of some petitions. A complaint was also filed against Clayton Walker, an independent who did not make the November ballot. Accused him of perjury and filing false documents. A telephone message was left at Walker's home Wednesday and was not immediately returned. Right, they're doing a big show to show the sheeple that, you know, there's integrity in voting. It's insane. State Division of Criminal Investigation Agent Brian Gothmaker said in an arrest affidavit that Bosworth attested to personally gathering signatures in January when she was in fact serving on a publicized medical mission trip in the Philippines. She also tested the gathering signatures on some Hutterite colonies, but residents interviewed said the documents were not signed in front of Bosworth. 
Uh, the colony had been contacted by phone by Dr. Bosworth, and one nominating petition came to them by mail asking that the petition be signed and she would take care of the rest. Goth Maker wrote, mm -hmm. uh, referring to a petition sent to the Millerdale colony in Miller, Hutteries, similar to Amish and Mennonites, living a life uh, centered on the religion on German-speaking colonies scattered across the northern U.S., uh, United States, and Canada. Right. Colonies, farms, landed estates. Sick. Sick, sick, sick. I see she's out of the quote country trying to uh, implicate hearts and minds. Sick, sick folks. As they try to impress these ideologies on the sheep all through their news presentations, media presentations, and all the crap that comes along with the CIA production company. So we're, are we out of um, stuff? I know that I finally got my, you know, board clean. What about you? Uh, well, let's see. I was looking for the top stories I covered on uh, Wednesday night. Uh, I had some good ones there. And, uh, let's see here. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I got them. Um, good. Go good. ahead with your next one here. I got, I got one I got to, got to get to before we go off. Okay. Well, <clears throat> you know, of course, last night I covered feminism on the Leaving the Farm show. Wednesday night, Bo covered so many things. I mean, that it was just an amazing show. One of my favorites again, in the Bo and Rocco show. And um, well, soon. let me well, okay. Well, I, I got. It. Let me just cover this one, you know, real quick, and you can um, go on with what you got. Uh, Delaware County, Ohio, St. Joseph County deputy prosecutor has been arrested on drug charges. Okay, now this is the uh, deputy of the. Uh, um, guy that uh, we gave indictments to right, and never did anything with them. Warwick, yeah. So he's guilty of basically more uh, 1506 stuff, 18 U.S.C. 1506. Right, conspiracy, you, know, you name it. And it looks like... But here we go, yeah, the, the deputy uh, and, and he got, got nabbed here. Ohio police picked up John Raleigh over the last weekend. They say he was questioned after an officer saw Rully and another man apparently trying to urinate in the woods, then run away. Uh, police say Rully admitted having marijuana on him. Spokesman for the St. Joseph County Prosecutor's Office says Rully resigned late Monday afternoon. Immediately, because it looks like Dvorak rolled on him. Dvorak really needed a fall guy. So he's the one with a lot of heat after we went after Congress. You know, because it was uh, in St. Joseph uh, County that the original George, judge, quote, Judge Chaplow, was evidencing by his own hand human trafficking, genocide. He's like resigning this month. Right. And it's, it's been interesting that these things are occurring. And to see um, this fall guy, you know, take it rather than Dvorak is... It's kind of sad, but, you know, of course he's not giving his minions a heads up, but hopefully, you know, as we go along, it will get garner, you know, maybe Fall Guys as listeners so that they can get out of the line of fire, because it, this Dvorak is hand-in-hand hand with Chaplow and, and Simon and all of the others. They were, um, you know, disallowing the sheriff to get information for the longest time and I have that on evidence I had a conversation with the police department that said they run around with the little sheriff stamper and the sheriff really doesn't have anything to do with his own county anymore because corporate counsel is the big wig in the counties and of course the chief of police in St. Joe um, uh, South Bend and, and all that was 
federally trained, and we, we learned so many things about the internal workings under national security. Um, again, it's all in the audios, it's in the case itself, you can read it, or you can listen to the prior audios, all the archives, I mean, that was our walk, the entire walk is is on record, we started out, you know, one show a week, and then we went to two, and three, and now, you know, uh, four shows a week. Yeah, we got a co combined total of four shows on the public law per week. Right, and it's it's just. And it's still it's working on the case behind the scenes here, so it's and the rest of them. really exhausting. Right, and um, but again, I mean, there's thousands of hours of the evidence of their works. We already, you know, when we first started, we I threw myself under the bus. That's what Jesus said for me to do. You're supposed to evidence their hands. So just volunteer. Throw yourself under the bus and watch what they do. And sure enough, they did it. There was never any protection under feminism. We, we proved that. That's how we took their funding last March. And that's why they're scrambling around. And by October, they got their federal funds taken away because they're, they're, they're not able to draw out of the Treasury. That's why they're cannibalizing each other now. They're trying to compensate and maintain their their standard of living and and we're seeing that even with the pope this week that was funny and i can't remember where i put my uh link to that the pope fired his entire board there said he's having some financial problems oh yeah that's uh <coughs> right i i can find that uh but um well, while you're looking for that i mean bear tree it's just profound so, from ChrisTV.com, second attorney charged for illegally soliciting clients. A second local attorney has been charged with illegally soliciting clients out of Bexar County. This is San Antonio, Texas. Attorney Keith Gold is charged with three felony counts of barratry. Gold works for the Gold Law Firm here in town. His colleague's fellow lawyer, Paul Andrews, is also being charged. The charges for both men appear to be connected to a 2011 lawsuit. There's not a record that Gold has been arrested. Andrews was arrested on Monday, but is now out on bond. He was indicted by the Bexar County Grand Jury last week. It looks like somebody rolled on somebody, huh? Because they haven't arrested the other guy, but they got the first one first. And, you know, loose lips, sink ships, and that kind of thing. Especially because Gold is the owner of the law firm. It always is nice to see the uh, underling you know, rolling on the, the big wig. Yeah, here it is at Blacklisted News. Uh, Pope Francis has sacked the five-man board of the Vatican's financial watchdog, all Italians. Yeah. The Vatican said the Pope named for uh, named four new members from Switzerland. Yeah. Wipo. So I'm thinking Switz uh, Nazi Templars, uh, Wipo. Wipo, the World Intellectual Property Organization. See, when we did the case, and, and you can read this in the genocide order, and Paul reads the genocide order for you, you can find that on Bonus Entertainment. And uh, World Intellectual Property Organization was Yeah, at YouTube. Case. Yeah. And, uh, it's, been a, it's been an interesting journey, Abel. So, four new members from Switzerland, Singapore, the United States, and Italy to replace them on the board of the Financial Information Authority. The whole Holy Sees internal regulatory office <laughs> the Pope will place the board members with what appears to be a group of very powerful behind-the-scenes global one world establishment operators yeah that's what black like the other ones were well on the other news reporting sources blackness listed news is going to promote that the Pope is a world government and then of course uh, you know another media realms it looks like he's scared and He's, he's financially hurting, and, and what had happened last March, at the same instance that we took the federal drawing rights because they were preying on me, quote, a female, um, we also put a seizure on their clerical goods because as clergy, they were supposed to be protecting the female. That was their function under the directives of the House of Lords. That's your job. I mean, if you're not going to protect humanity, well, what the heck are you doing in that? Why are you getting funds out of the Treasury? Why are you getting special drawing rights out of the Federal Reserve that you set up in the first place to protect, you know, victims? 
and um, all of this again it's all in the audios line by line uh, the predation of, of myself is all on record um, from start to finish and it's just it's been profound what they were stupid enough to evidence themselves to be doing yep so I guess things are getting rough for the Pope he'll probably have to switch out all of his gold goblets for uh, copper or something yeah, worse than that maybe uh, aluminum yeah maybe you should use aluminum absolutely Re out of recycled beer cans absolutely with a plastic liner so you know you can have some of that BPA make sure that it's lots and lots of, of uh, BPA in there feminize him look I like to see him with little bumps in the front of his can where his robe is a little bit more estrogen than, uh, that's what they're do dosing humanity with you know, there's so much estrogen in the plastics now that, I mean, it, it, it's, it boggles the mind that, you know, we could buy into so many bad things. Now, the world has become reliant not on oil, not on oil and, and car use, but oil byproducts. Everything that everybody knows in this commercialized society is plastic. They have been maintaining their servitude, their subjugation by being reliant on plastics and oil byproducts and worshipping a corporation that was selling this to them. When in reality, they could be farming and doing other things with their time rather than being litigants in court or speakers or all of these fictional things or presentations for to be seen of men. Yeah, they don't produce anything besides misery. Right, that's it. And, uh, and that's, that's all they do. They're bean counters, counting human beings, because under the global banking schematic uh, now since 1941, the human beings are used to offset congressional bankruptcy. Right. Back that's all it is, over and over again. Right, back to Article 12. They just refined it. Article 12 of the Articles of Confederation said that you were pledged for the debt. And charged. And it just said that what they did was they refined it and the corporation got more efficient and more efficient and more efficient throughout time. 1941 was like they kicking it into gear. The whole machine just worked really really smoothly at that point. And then they yeah, then they uh, recreated the CIA and the military through the National Security Act, yep, 1947. 47. And by 1974, they had insured all of the deposits, which is human beings, with the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. So th they started hedging all those bets. I mean, it, it just went in a whirlwind where the, the human trafficking schematic just, uh, just and they get up there on TV and in their campaigns and on the road, you know, which they spend most of their political lives doing these sort of things, uh, trying to promote how good of a person they are, yeah. you know, and they smile and they, you Kiss know, babies. they do all this stuff and, uh, you know, try to look good for the camera, you know, and <laughs> these are the people that are responsible for the genocide. Right, and that's exactly what Jesus said. What just came out of your mouth, you can read that in Matthew 23. You can read that in Matthew 6. He says, these are hypocrites. All they do is things to be seen of men. That's all they do. When in reality, they need to stop polishing the outside of their cup and making themselves look pretty. They need to work on the inside because the inside is just dead. It's gone. They have no human compassion, no empathy. They are soulless. Well, the ones caught up in it are just, they're they are finished already. They've already evidenced their works. Right. Absolutely. And, and, you know, that's what Jesus said about accountability for all those that harm children. Be it better that you have a millstone wrapped around your neck. You be tossed into the sea of commerce. And, the, again, if, if you want to hear about this particular aspect, the accountability, tune in to the Bowen Rocco Show. Revolution Radio Freedom Service.com every Wednesday night, 10 to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And right now, we're Bo has a different operating system than I have. 
and that we're used to. So we're learning the uh, broadcasting, and as soon as we're up to speed, he will be over here on No Borders Radio, also simulcasting on Theonosaur. Um, but again, we've been so overwhelmed with everything that we've been dealing with that that'll take a moment. Yeah, the kind of work that goes on behind the scenes and his things uh, really requires a staff. But I have no staff because, uh, there's, you know, well, Not a got, lot of got one of them uh, being held as a political prisoner right now, right. for one. It's just interesting. It's been interesting. And that's what they do it for. It puts you down on your knees and, you know, again, and Bo says, We'll just keep going forward. Keep going forward. And I think that was one of the most profound shows was uh, the Bone Rocko show the week after Mom passed on November 8th. So it would have been uh, the week after that. It was a really good Bone Rocko show. Well, as another example then here of the cannibalization in progress. LCTA officials charge. Uh, this is in Royalton from the Citizens Voice dot com news. State Attorney General's office on Wednesday filed criminal charges against two Luzerne County transportation officials in co connection with a months long probe into the Ghost Rider scandal. Yeah, that one's also big words. Nice one. Transportation Authority. Executive Director Stanley J. Strelish, 60, of Wilkes Bar, is facing 47 counts, including theft by deception, tampering with public records, unsworn falsifications, false swearing, and obstructing justice of the charges. 26 counts are felonies. Read the grand jury presentment here at this link. Um, well, I'm not into uh, grand juries, but. All right, whatever they got to do on their side to cannibalize each other is fine. Uh, Exeter resident Rob Allen Henderson, 58, the LCTA director of operations, is facing 27 counts, including conspiring to tamper with public records, aiding the commission of a crime, and conspiring to obstruct justice. 20 of the charges he faces are felonies. Magister uh, magisterial judge, district judge David Judy, Arraigned both men Wednesday in Royalton, Dauphin County. Judy said state prosecutors did not object to unsecured bail, so he released them without having them postponed. Oh, who'd they sell them to? I love that word now. Yeah. I do. I love to hear these psychopaths being released to others. Yeah, they love renting each other out. Absolutely. Deputy Attorney General Bernard Anderson noted that standard bail conditions of no contact with the witnesses would be difficult in this case. Both supervise many of the witnesses, so there obviously is concerns of in, uh, intermediation and retaliatory behavior. Absolutely, that's why you need to lock them up. Both defense attorneys assured there would be no such improper contact. Yeah. Uh, that's coming from attorney, so yeah. you can take that with a grain of salt. Absolutely. Following the arraignment, Strelish and Henderson were slated to get uh, mug shots taken and give fingerprints at Dauphin County Central Booking Center. Both declined to comment. According to a release from the Attorney General's office, a grand jury convened in Harrisburg recommended the charges after hearing evidence and testimony that established Strelish and Henderson acted illegally when they submitted inflated senior citizens ridership numbers to the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation. Oh. Now this is what it's all about. They're ele elevating these these numbers for funds. For personal gain. Yeah. And they, they also have a program out there of, um, you know, it's a tax program that allows senior citizens to ride the bus for free and it was along with that rent rebate system, or they used to when I lived in Pennsylvania anyway. And, um, man, they're, they're, so they're sticking it to the government, sticking it to the uh, federal state, as well as sticking it to elderly. So they, they shouldn't be out of 
uh, on any kind of release. It should be immediately taken into the Pyongyang project. The authority recorded dramatic increases in senior ridership after Strelish and Henderson took their jobs, posting a 51% increase in the first two years, according to the prosecutors. The most extreme case had a bus driver recording 53 fares for every actual passenger. Oh, now those, those elderly people, could they get to where they were going? So there was a lot of elderly that were turned away then. Because they were misusing those funds that were intended for the elderly. And the elderly were never getting that. That's sick. Yeah. That's sick. Prosecutors say Strelish and Henderson conspired to inflate the numbers by directing drivers to hit the senior citizen rider button as many times as they want. In practice, known as hitting the button. Drivers were instructed to hit the button both by direct order and through training yeah. and subtle pressure, according to prosecutors. Subtle pressure. That's fourth generation warfare. Call it for what it is. Yeah. Prosecutors said Strelish ordered drivers to coach other drivers into padding the fare box, often threatening layoffs of senior Ridership numbers were not high. Criminal coercion. Strelish, in turn, certified the false data as accurate and submitted it to Penn DOT, Pennsylvania Department of Transportation, which used the numbers to award grants to the authority, prosecutors yeah. said. These officials manipulated a program designed to offer seniors free public ridership. Attorney General Kathleen K. Kane, uh, G. Kane said in a prepared statement in the process. Oh, she's a psychopath anyway. They defrauded the Commonwealth of more than $3.1 million and created an environment of intimidation and angst in the workplace. The Ghostwriter scandal surfaced in July 2012 when LCTA board members Patrick Conway alleged bus drivers were encouraged to inflate the numbers of senior citizens of buses to maintain the boost state and boost state funding allocations. The authority has denied those allegations, although Strelish admitted in May of 2013 that drivers had been miscounting senior riders. Yeah, miscounting. Yeah, he, they, they, he directed them to do it. He said, yeah, oh, they've been miscounting them. Miscounting them. them. And not, not only that, this is like, you know, somebody walking up and, and uh, you know, Pickpocketing your your grandma or stealing her purse. These these people are preying on the elderly. This is sick. So Strelich is attributed to errors to lack of training and said the issue has been corrected. Miscounting. Pennsylvania DOT in January demanded a three point one six million dollar refund from the authority after its own review of the numbers. Indicated. Wait, wait, that's another form of embezzlement. What's it going to get refunded for? It didn't go to the elderly. Yeah. They're, they're trying to embezzle. This is sick. Yeah, yeah. It just gets worse the more you read, doesn't it? Right. Uh, so they're all in bed together, preying on the elderly. Yeah. In your name. Yeah, yeah. So it goes on. There's even more to this. And, um, yeah, every bit of it is just uh, disclosure about how they're operating how, how they're just raising humanity everywhere anywhere they can for a buck that's what they do they're attorneys they rule the world because you keep consenting to this stuff sick so anyways looks like we're about out of time yeah it says it's been two hours thank you guys for listening to the public law with Bo and Tammy right here on No Borders Radio at No Borders Radio Dot co dot uk as well as simulcasting on tyrannosaur.com and join us tomorrow night it'll be leaving the farm simulcast right here on no borders and tyrannosaur and everything else do you have any parting words that's what 8 to 10 p.m eastern i know six for tomorrow the, saturday oh, at six to, oh six yeah. to eight on studio six to eight eastern now let's have break down into the gmt i know we got a that'll lot be of, 11 yeah more than five yeah, hours, yeah. so it'll be 11 o'clock GMT, uh, 6 Eastern, and of course 3 Pacific. And we'll be here tomorrow night. And, uh, it's actually tonight already, and 
in the UK. Kind of night hours. So, uh, 5 o'clock in the morning there. <laughs> well, then, for you there just getting up, a good day. <laughs> Be well, everybody. We'll see you. Bye.